So, and what's actually inside are uh, different precious stones and minerals and energy amplifiers with uh, our frequency therapy technology. So, and in a nutshell, like high level, uh, what Samovedic is doing is we are amplifying their, their properties. Let's link up with Krista on the fix. She's a wellness coach with a focus on mental well being and physical strength. What's happening, Fix listeners? Welcome back to our latest episode of the Fix Podcast. I'm your host, Krista Huber, and we have a really fun episode for you today that's a topic I've actually never approached before here on the show. So I'm very excited to bring a new guest, a new area of expertise, a very interesting component of the world of biohacking, and specifically talking about EMFs or electromagnetic frequencies. Now, you may be like me, not know too much about this topic beyond mention of things like 5G and the fact that your phone runs on 5G. Well, you are going to get a crash course in this episode from the CEO of a very cool company called Soma Vedic. I actually have one of their products and we will talk about all of that throughout this conversation and the benefits that I've experienced in my own life as well as other testimonials from their customers. And that's Uri Kosar who sat down with me this week to talk about his journey, his own personal health journey, and how he was basically told by doctors that from a combination of high blood pressure, cholesterol issues, and various other things, his life was going to look like a series of pills and medication, and he felt like that answer just wasn't good enough. It led him to explore Chinese medicine and some alternative practices, and that journey led him to this company and their products. And What a lot of the theme of this chat really centers on is just this exchange of energy and how we are being bombarded with so much of it from technology. And while technology is beautiful and the power of technology and what it affords us to do in our lives, the speed at which we can do things, the way we can communicate, I mean, shit, even the fact that I can be sitting here right now recording this podcast episode, wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't even be able to be listening to it without the power of technology, but This does shed light on what that actually does to our bodies and how we need to be aware of just this very interconnected world that we have and impact that that may have on our system. And for me personally, I've seen a really big change in my sleep and the quality of my sleep that I've been getting since I started using the Soma Vedic. And if you listen through to this episode, through to the end of this episode, you will hopefully, maybe be interested in potentially getting your own Soma Vedic. So for all the fixed listeners out there, I do have a little discount code for you guys to get 10% off, which I linked down in the show notes if you'd like to check it out. I highly encourage everybody to go ahead and visit the Soma Vedic website because there are a ton of excellent resources on there, different research, different studies that really give a lot more context to a lot of what your eye and I discuss throughout this conversation, but I think it'll be another really valuable episode. And hopefully as you do every other week, something you learn something from it. So with that, let's toss the mic over to your eye and dive right into today's episode. I ask all of my guests who are a part of the fixed podcast, what their go-to coffee order is. So what do you like to sip on in the morning? Yeah, so I, I try to delay my morning coffee uh, as, as late as possible, uh, but my but my go-to coffee is uh, old old uh, like a standard uh, old latte with uh, only half shot just just the yeah half shot of coffee because my body is quite sensitive to the to the coffee, so just half shot is is uh, definitely fine for me. And I'm curious, do you, are you familiar with a lot of the research around why it's actually pretty beneficial to delay your coffee, like at least 90 minutes after you wake up? Or is that something that just being in tune with your body and what works for you, you've kind of figured out on your own? It's, uh, I try to, uh, the right word would be 
like like listen but you know just the body yeah you know when something's is, is usually usually people know when something is good for them or not so i try to you know from the feedback uh and how i felt i'm delaying it but definitely you know not later than, than 10 or 11 a.m okay yeah i was wondering that because even in my own personal journey with my stress levels and understanding how cortisol functions in the body from the advice of fellow nutrition coaches in the space of my own nutrition coach, she said to me, why don't you try delaying your coffee about 90 minutes after you wake up and see what it does for you. And I've been doing that for well over the past year and just kind of limiting caffeine intake in general compared to what I used to do. I would be like four espresso shots deep in comparison oh. to half espresso shot over there. Um, so it's, it's done the body good for sure. And it's definitely helped with my circadian rhythm and just it, it's, it's crazy what coffee, the benefits of coffee are amazing, but there is, for lack of a better term, like the dark side to it too, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, if, if I would have a, if I would have a coffee after 5 p.m., uh, I wouldn't fall asleep. Yeah, me neither. I don't even, sometimes like even 2 p.m., I'm pretty sensitive to it, but yeah. there's some people out there that they don't feel like it does that to them. More power to them. But anyways, getting more into you and talking more about Soma Vedic, the direction I really want to take this conversation, if you're willing to talk about your own personal journey, you know, and listening to other interviews that you've done, it sounds like the way you got connected with this company, um, as now the CEO, it was kind of like a self health exploratory journey and trying to find different things, um, that were, could work for you in terms of the way you were being treated from a health standpoint and what doctors were telling you and not maybe not being satisfied with some of the answers they were giving you. And in kind of starting there, I'd really love for you to just give the context to the listener. And the way I usually frame up this question for my guests is tell us about who you are as a person, but rather than listing off your resume, Talk to us about why we should care about you, your story, Soma Vedic. Like, why is the rest of this conversation important to the listener? Yeah, definitely. So, make, making a long story short, uh, you know, I was I was struggling with uh, with uh, various uh, health issues, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, brain fog, and, and all of that. Uh, I, I at this time I realized that it's because of the of the food and, uh, of the like lifestyle, but still I turned to to you know to the doctors and they just gave me pills uh, or tried to give me pills and they told me you know like yeah when I've asked them okay so when I will be cured or healed they said like well this is for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So I realized, okay, so this is definitely not something uh, I want to, you know, pursue. Uh, so for the next two years, you know, I was trying to find the right balance. Uh, and I quite dramatically changed my diet. Uh, you know, I left all of the, you know, like uh, white flour, meat, sugar, like like all, all of that. And within six six months, uh, all my symptoms were gone. I felt like way way better. So I stayed I stayed on that, and uh, this was like a two year two year journey. And when I was finally like hundred percent fit, and my mind was was sharp, and you know, so uh, I had this this like calling, uh, or yeah, that. I would like to help other people, you know, to, to improve their like diet or lifestyle or just to get uh, out of their, you know, like, uh, uh health problems, sure. uh, just by, you know, sharing what, what, what I've learned. Uh, I didn't have any specific idea how to do it. Uh, I just had, you know, you know, when you have something inside you that you would love to do. So I continue like working with, with my like, uh, everyday job but this was somewhere in the back and uh around 2000 and this this what i'm describing is uh around 2000 uh like like 15 16 okay and in 2018 i stumbled upon upon some of Eric. uh a friend of mine i was visiting him and he had these like you know like glowing lamps all over his living room and and he shared some stories with me uh you know and i found found it really fascinating so i got one 
uh, brought it to the office. Uh, basically, since the first day in the office, I felt the, the difference, uh, the, the energy levels when I was leaving. Because, you know, when you go to work on an everyday basis, same, same chair, same environment, let's say same work, you know how you feel by the end of the day of course. when you're leaving. Uh, but all of a sudden, there was a totally different, uh, like, energy levels. There were, you know, like, I felt, I felt, like, full of energy still at the end of the day. And the only thing uh, that changed in the last, let's say, months was that uh, I had the somatic on the table. So this was quite, like, huge for me and the very first experience. And I then basically it clicked and, you know, I said like, yeah, this is it. This is, you know, what I would like to do. So, yeah. So basically that I started helping them, you know, with the go to market strategy on the U S uh, to the U S and then, yeah, but, but yeah, that's in a, in, in a nutshell, my, my road. Now it's before we jump into the, you know, the Soma Vedic itself, um, I find it super interesting that you place it in your office and, and I've heard you talk about this too on some of the other podcasts I've listened to and the people who've interviewed you. I immediately, when I got mine, I was like, oh, I'm going to put this right in my room. And, you know, I am somebody who, when I look at the areas or the buckets of my health, like from that holistic approach, I know for me, sleep is something that I'm not great about prioritizing. So I think that's kind of where my head went of like, okay, well, how can I get the most benefit from this immediately? And I felt like that was the place for me to put it. But now that I keep hearing people mention this work example, it's making me want to bring it to my office um, and see if I, I kind of notice anything. Um, Cause as I alluded to having had mine for a little while now, I, I wear a whoop and I have noticed my sleep efficiency has improved like several percentage points, even if I'm spending the same amount of time in bed. And I really haven't changed a whole lot. Like over the course of a year plus, I've gotten better about wearing blue blocker glasses, lowering the lights, you know, not being on my phone. And, but those have been incremental improvements over yeah. time versus if I just look at the last two months or so, really having this and, you know, as you said, describing it kind of like a lamp, the other word that I'll use or that if somebody sees it in my room, they're like, what is that little orb? Because it kind of just yeah. looks like this little orb on my floor. Um, but it, it's the one big thing that I've changed and I've definitely noticed a difference with it. Um, but, you know, before I just start bragging about all the great things that I feel like it's done for me, we obviously need to tell the listener what exactly it is and what it does. But even before describing the Soma Vedic as a product, I think it would be helpful to just set the stage and talk about 5G, EMF, geopathic stress, and really kind of define those of the three wherever you want to start. Because quite frankly, I think, you know, even personally having an interest in this subject matter, the most I really knew about 5G previously was that, oh, my phone emits 5G. And that's all I knew. So can we talk about it from why we should care about the fact that it's in our environment and how that may play an impact on our health? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like EMFs in general uh, are definitely important topic to, to, to talk about, to, you know, bring into the mainstream and raise awareness about. Uh, so currently there are more than than 25,000 peer-reviewed studies showing adverse effects of EMFs on, uh, on human bodies, on plants, on, on, on animals. So there is more than enough data if, if someone would be still hesitant. Uh, there, is still more, there is more than enough data uh, that, that is showing this. But of course, uh, you know, then you have the, the, the big companies and the lobby and, and, uh, and, and all of that. The, you know that it's basically slowing down you know to to increase the awareness about about this but getting back to what what emf is you know is these electromagnetic uh, frequencies that almost any uh, device that is plugged into electricity emits and uh, but the the biggest let's say generators of emfs are of course like uh, wi-fi routers cell phones laptops uh wireless headphones and etc and you know there there were these these two scientists professors that uh, 
tried to measure uh, the levels of EMFs in 2015 compared to 100 years uh, 200 years ago, basically when the electricity was invented, and uh, they they calculated that the, the current levels of EMFs are like current means 2015 and it's exponentially growing every oh, year. Sure. Yes, so are a billion, billion times higher than 100 years ago. That's, so this is like an extreme like, like levels of, of increase. That, me, and that means that our bodies is definitely not a natural environment for our bodies to live in. And, uh, it's, uh, and they just, throughout this, you know, like short period of time, because, you know, it's like two generations, 100 years, uh, not even that. Uh, they were our bodies were not able to to adapt so you know we have it it's really the life is really convenient and then easy and we are we are used to it and i uh, i mean i do love technology you know that it, it connects people it, it's really great but we really have to be also you know mindful about using it bringing not bringing it to the to the bedroom and and, and all of that yeah yeah, it's and you know just to jump off it, the last point you just made, technology is amazing. Like the fact that we're able to even have this conversation right now, right? We, it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for a lot of the technological advancements that have happened in such a short period of time. But I think even the study you're highlighting is really important in the fact that it has a very similar parallel to. A lot of the points I often make to my clients when it comes to their nutrition and diet, because we forget how quickly our society has progressed in a relatively very short period of time versus where the human body is, right? Like if we take this into a more of a evolutionary conversation and we look at stress in particular, this is usually the area that I bring this up when I'm talking to my clients, like on an evolutionary based, very fundamental level, you were put on this earth for two things, to survive and reproduce. But now we have all this other stuff that's happening to us on a daily basis that our bodies don't know how to deal with. So they compartmentalize them as those two categories, right? Like how is this preventing me from surviving? And how is this preventing me from reproducing? And what does my body need to do to protect itself for those two things to continue to be possible? And that then can show up in, you know, your inability to lose body fat, you know, how you deal with stress, all these different health markers that can result in a number of other issues. And I, I'm kind of like going on a little rant on this because I'd love to hear your take on what you just said about technology and appreciating technology, but also understanding the risks and the potential health risks that are involved. How can the average person, and maybe it is Soma Vedic, find a balance to the point where they're not making themselves feel crazy, like that, you know, they can't have their phone in the room, they can't do this, they have to have a Wi Fi, like their Wi Fi router needs to be on a timer every single night. Because I think a lot of this stuff you can take to the nth degree. So how can you, the average person, kind of find that balance in your everyday? Yeah, that's, that's definitely a great question. Because, uh, uh, you know, when you have, uh, we are doing this not to scare people and really exactly. to re bring awareness. And uh, there are so many things now going on and we don't want to add, you know, on, on top of that. Right. But yeah, but, but there are like really easy things that, that we can do. So like two, there are two main, let's say areas that, that we can do. It's uh, increasing the distance and lowering the exposure itself. Increasing the distance means, for example, placing your, or placing, let's say, your, your bed or your chair where you work uh, as far from the Wi-Fi router as possible, or the other way around, placing the Wi-Fi router like somewhere else. Uh, as far as possible from your bed, for example. Ideally, you can turn it off. You know, when you are the last one uh, in your home and apartment that, that's going, that, that is going to sleep, you can just turn it off. You don't need it when, when everybody sleeps. So, so, you know, and uh, that's one example. Then it would be, you know, when you, regarding the distance. Uh, for example, when you are on a call, 
uh, you know, you use like uh, the loudspeaker, you know, that you don't have it near, near your head or you use uh, wired headphones. Uh, definitely not, uh, don't use, uh, you know, like the, the wireless ones, uh, cause they even communicate with each other. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, really, uh, I would say even like, like an extreme exposure, you know, when having, uh, wireless headphones, like so, so for so many hours, uh, and, and using them, uh, and then, uh, you know, our, yeah, so I mentioned the, the sleep, the, the Wi-Fi, uh, using using the uh, loudspeakers and, and everything. And then, for example, I mean, it's not always possible to have wired internet, uh, you know, at, at home. But what you can do, uh, you can buy uh, EMF blocking fabric or or the, uh, well, I know, or pads, EMF blocking pads that you put below your laptop on your lap. Uh, for example, you know that so your lab is not exposed. So so that like these those are quite quite easy you know easy things to do to move around things and and uh, yeah not bringing your cell phone into your bedroom or you can bring it and just just uh, turn it on on the flight mode. But for example, check you know if your uh, Bluetooth and and Wi-Fi is really off. Because you have to go into the settings so to like turn it really off. off. Yes, yeah. yes, to, to turn it all the way off. So, so, and then, you know, for example, you can ground yourself just, you know, standing barefoot uh, when, you know, just for just for a few minutes a day. So these are definitely, you know, easy things to do uh, for, for, for majority of people. Uh, it usually, it doesn't even cost anything and those are like easy let's say habits uh and that definitely i don't think that you know put some more stress on ourselves right yeah and i love i love that you use the word habits it's ha the habits and consistency are probably my two favorite words <laughs> that i use right. with my clients that i talk about on this podcast often if i had a count i'm sure they're my most frequently used and i think it's also important to note right that you could look at a product like Soma Vedic, but if you're not doing a lot of the other things that you mentioned, it's only going to take you so far, correct? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, you know, for example, uh, I have a friend like Luke Story, a great guy. Uh, you know, he said that he changed his life like up upside down, changed everything, but still he was not feeling okay. And uh, when he actually like lowered the EMF exposure, that would work for him, you know? So, so yes, there are different ways, different products, how to lower the exposure, block the, the exposure, uh, or uh, mitigate the, the effects of EMFs. Now, what is your take on wearables in particular, right? Like I mentioned the Whoop or like an Apple Watch or even the Aura Ring. Do you find that they can be a little bit of a double-edged sword in a lot of ways because they're monitoring this great data for us, but it's almost a question of like at what cost? Yes, yes, definitely. Now, so for example, uh, I don't have uh, like iPhone one, but I uh, I had a Aura Ring, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, with Aura Ring you can put it on the flight mode as well, so it's okay. not emitting emitting Bluetooth. Uh, but even, let's say, even if you don't, uh, when I was wearing Aura Ring for, let's say, I think it was about two months, I've learned, uh, thanks, thanks to the, to the data that, you know, late snacking, drinking, eating, uh, is, isn't good for me, like coffee, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I learned this, uh, during the first, let's say four to five weeks. And then I saw the repeating pattern and basically then I didn't need it anymore, you know, because I knew what's good and what's not. And then I like, okay, great job, Aura, I learned or basically confirmed because you know what's not good for you. But but it confirmed, uh, you know, what, what, what is good, what is not. So, so there's definitely, they have a place in our lives. Uh, it's just a question of how we want to use them. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's really valid. And I think that's a very interesting point. I was even having a conversation with someone recently that it the the other piece of it that can be tricky about wearing it long some of these things long term you may wake up thinking you had a great night's sleep right and to your point of listening to your body and knowing what does and doesn't work for you and then you check this app and it might tell you something otherwise and you start to are you you're like playing this game with yourself like why am i tired like so there there is definitely like some of that analysis paralysis that i think can go on with a lot of those things but i appreciate your take on that and i i like the fact that you put it into that perspective of hey deep down you knew a lot of these things already but there's the if you want that confirmation there's the information through the data right in front of you uh but jumping more into soma vedic itself let's talk about the the various products, there's different models. Um, and I know we can get into structured water and, and that sort of thing, but just more specifically talking about like what is in the technology. And I do know that compared to other EMF blockers, so to speak, because I know that's not exactly how some Vedic works. So I'd like for you to kind of break that all down um, and what makes it different. But just tell me a little bit more about the technology itself. Sure, definitely. There's a there's a, uh, a short story uh, behind some of Eric. You know, it was uh, you know uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and this is this was also uh, with, with, with some of Eric. So I'm the CEO, but my dear friend Ivan is the is the actual inventor. And again, his story is similar to mine. He was also struggling with his health. Okay. Doctors were not able to to help him, so he turned to like Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine and different different he- healing modalities, and uh, that eventually helped him. But he was also uh, also playing with uh, frequency therapy technology. And, uh, you know, he had this after he was able, you know, to, he healed himself, he healed himself, helped uh, his family and friends. He had this idea, you know, well, like, why, why not put this, you know, to, the, together, you know, like this, this uh, Western technology with the, with, the, with the Eastern approach to, to health and wellness. And basically, it took him about four years with experimenting to put the very first somovedic together. Uh, and this was in April uh, 2011. So somovedic is not a new device. We are fairly new on the US market. We entered it in late 2019. But uh, yeah, we are on the market for, for more than uh, like 10 years now. Uh, so, and what's actually inside are uh, different precious stones and minerals and energy amplifiers with uh, our frequency therapy technology. So, and in a nutshell, like high level, what the Somovedic is doing is we are amplifying their, their properties. And what, so this is creating a coherent field around Somovedic where our bodies uh, re- react, not only our bodies, like plants, animals, react differently uh, to, the, to the environment that we live in, you know, to the, to the EMFs and, and geobatic zones and, and all of that. So, so it's creating this, you know, this supportive field, supportive environment for, for the bodies to start their own, uh, you know, regenerating regenerative process because it's the body that is doing the the, the the healing. We we are there helping it just just to 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 start it. So uh, and as as you mentioned, uh, the somovedi is uh, not blocking anything. The Wi-Fi, you know, your cell phone is still is still working. Uh, it's it's like an additional additional layer that uh, that is created in in your environment. Now, I'm curious with, I, I didn't realize until just researching more about the company that it had been around for over 10 years, um, but was just more specifically new to the U.S. market. How much do you think, and in, in kind of putting your CEO hat on, like from global expansion and, and global marketing and looking at it from a business perspective, how much do you think like Soma Vedic's path in terms of the markets it's entered has to do with culture 
and how we prioritize our health in different mm-hmm. countries. Because I'd be curious of your perspective on, you know, like the U.S. versus some other markets where it took off initially. Yes, yes, that's that's a great question. So there are, uh, I would say, there are really big differences in in uh, in, in nationalities and, and countries. Uh, until recently, the biggest uh, market for us was Japan. Uh, but Japan, you know, that's very uh, traditional. You know, the, you have there all these very strict rules uh, regarding like everything. You know, not only marketing, and, and that's very you know where where on the let's say the really opposite side uh, is the U.S. You know, like this, this, this open, open to experimentation, open more, definitely more open to, to these, uh, you know, uh, technologies and and uh, uh, and yeah, the new approaches, uh, es- especially in the in the biohacking area. You know, like people do want to experience uh, and and test out what the, the newest thing. So, so th- that's why we, you know, we grew thanks to the thanks to the this this community uh, so 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 fast because uh it's uh it's definitely you know the people that are most open to this so so the differences uh differences are definitely like and, and Europe is somewhere in the middle so and and yeah so you have this traditional Japan and then you have this you know like the the US market that is uh, that is really, let's say, receptive and open. Now, would you say, like, with uh, I'm, Europe in particular, when I think about just like the approach to health in Europe and and what people look at and prioritize, and or even just like our relationships to technology in a lot of these different regions of the world, would you think that um, maybe people in European countries like? are they not as reliant necessarily on their phones on different things? Are they better about unplugging and unwinding in the way that they manage stress, for example, and how does that cultural element kind of fit in with Soma Vedic's philosophy? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a great question. So, uh, you know, I definitely cannot like generalize on right. each countries, but the the observation in the in, in a nutshell that when I compare uh, Europe to to US, so there are more the people tend uh, are you know more let's say health let's say conscious what they what they eat and and everything uh, so the the overweight or obesity obesity is, is not that high in in general in europe uh, but uh what's interesting they are the us is more uh receptive or open you know to the let's say to the emf and, and 5g uh like potent you know, like what it, what it can cause us. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the the Europe is more, let's say, you know, ah, uh, well, I don't know, I, so so you know, there are these, yeah, there, yeah, skeptics. There are these these two sides that you uh, in different areas and pe- people different open or 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 close to. That's, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, kind of shifting away from that. And talking more specifically about the different products with Soma Vedic, talk to me a little bit about like, you know, I know that you have the top selling product that's the most popular. Um, and, and then we could also kind of get into structured water and talk a little bit more about that in particular versus just some of the role that EMF plays into all of this. But kind of walk me through if somebody's listening to this and they're thinking about potentially investing in a product like Soma Vedic, where should they start? What should they consider when they're looking at um, the different offerings that you have? Yeah. So we have, uh, we have the green one that is, uh, is called the Vedic and that's the, that's the bestseller is the most versatile and universal unit we have It's you know, it's strong enough for, for city centers. It's, it is uh, structuring the water. So that's, the, let's say the center point and the, that's the one to go for. Uh, then of course, uh, if, if you don't have budget for that, we have, uh, we have products that, that are uh, a bit cheaper. Um, 
similar strength, like by strength, I mean the strength of the field of the EMF uh, FX mitigations. Uh, but for example, they don't structure water. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, you know, the, the top of the line, like, like Ember, that is really like designed for, for, you know, like corporate buildings. And when you have like, like 5G towers uh, all around you. So, uh, and you know, like to, to, be, to bring it a bit closer, you know, so we mentioned in the beginning that, or you mentioned it, it looks like a, like an orb. Uh, so each, uh, each somatic is, uh, actually like a unique, like original because, uh, it's a uh, handmade and hand blown. It's from glass, you know, this glass, like corpus or glass body, uh, you know, this, each one of them is it's, it's handmade and hand blown. So uh, it's not, there's a lot of work and effort put into it, and a lot yeah. of hands are working on, on, on each one. So we are doing everything here, here in the Czech, Czech Republic. So it's, uh, and because the Czech Republic has quite a long tradition in the, in the, in the glass making. So, so those are, you know, those are the, the dif different models. And uh, of course, if you if you would like to try one, uh, we have a sixty day money back guarantee. Uh, that means it's basically risk free to test it out uh, and see if it's uh, if it's working for you or not. Uh, and uh, the things that uh, you should uh, well, you can you can what's the word? Pay attention to so the the. The feedback, the most frequent feedback that we are getting from customers is the improvement of sleep. Uh, and I think this was with, with your case as well. So it's yeah, the improvement yeah, of, of sleep, uh, improvement of uh, energy levels during the day, uh, feelings of peace and, and calmness, and uh, lower uh, lower headaches and, 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 and fewer, or fewer, fewer headaches and then uh, low, low frequency of, of brain fog. So, these are the, the most frequent, uh, you know, like experiences that, that our customers have when they, uh, you know, try to try uh, some of it out. And I think it's really interesting what you mentioned about all of them being unique. And it, it makes me think about the fact that at the end of the day, a lot of what we're really talking about here, if you strip away some of the terminology and like the science component to it, it's just really about energy, right? So if you think about like everything in life as being an energy exchange, um, I even think that makes me think about like when I explain nutrition to my clients in terms of calories, like we're looking at this energy balance, right? And to, to talk about the way that it's made in particular, I think that's really special and I can understand the intent behind that because if you, if let's say this was made in a way that it was kind of like, okay, we're churning this out. It's this product, like make the next one, makes the next one with this like intent to like rush and just kind of get to the next thing and not appreciate it as a craft, right. Or like an art form, then it's almost like a little bit of that energy is getting into the product and kind of defeating the purpose behind it. Yes. Yes. I definitely, uh, you know, since 2012, I try to be very like mindful about intentions and about energy and how I think about the things that I'm doing. And yeah, the, the intention is, is the correct word. Like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Like, is the, is, is, is it money? Is it, you know, I want to be, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, I want to have the attention or, or why, why is that, you know, or, or why we have this quite long and expensive process of, of, uh, creating a somatic. So, you know, and, uh, and this is, you know, I believe in this, I believe in the, in the power of, of intention and that, uh, that the energy you put into something or you think about something, uh, will just return and you can, usually people can feel it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, we've mentioned like in people's, you know, I've mentioned like my own example of using mine in my bedroom. We've talked about using it in like office space. Are there other places that you suggest for people to potentially place theirs and, and kind of pay attention to what some of those changes are for them? Or maybe even yeah. talk about like testimonials and things and feedback. Sure. 
So, so the best place uh, we recommend uh, placing the somovetic uh, would be uh, somewhere in the middle of your apartment. Okay. Uh, usually living room, uh, living room or kitchen, because the the feel that the somovetic is is creating is about 100 feet radius. So it's quite big and it's like penetrating walls and floors. Uh, in case you would have a large apartment or, or, or house, uh, place the somovetic closer to the bedroom. Uh, you, we don't recommend placing it directly in the bedroom uh, because, you know, it, it might for the first days, it might disturb. If it would be directly in the bedroom, it might disturb your sleep because of the, the, the energies and everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's cause, and why a bit closer to the bedroom? Cause, uh, our sleep is the most precious time when our bodies have, you know, uh, the time and uh, like to regenerate. So we definitely want to protect that, uh, sacred time during, during our sleep. So, so yeah, somewhere in the, in the living room or, or, or kitchen. So also you can structure water and, uh, that means just basically placing a jug of water next to the somovetic and about and and in about 15 20 minutes it's structured and why is this important is that the the structured water is you know most uh, bioavailable like state of, of of water you get much uh, better hydration from the same amount of of, uh, of structured water and yeah, it's it's generally in, in general it's it's uh it's yeah to uh, great to have your body properly hydrated. So I actually I don't have the um soma vedic that does structure water, but in talking to you about this, it's making me want to have that model. So that might need to be a, a future purchase. But let's talk about that a little more. Like what exactly does it mean for water to be structured versus say like the water that you're just getting from tap water or even like the water, like the potential side effects or harmful effects or why that's superior to say even like bottled water or something like that? Yeah. So, uh, there was this, uh, famous Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto who brought it uh, to the mainstream and to the attention how uh, our intentions and emotions are affecting uh, the water. Uh, and he was one of the first ones that was taking photographs of the, of the water crystals when, when he froze the, froze the water. So, and in case the water is structured, uh, it has nice geometric shape. It looks like a snowflake, for example, different variations of, of, of a snowflake. If water is not structured, then it's uh, the pattern is chaotic. It doesn't look nice. It's basically chaotic. And you can tell immediately which one uh, is structured and, and which one is not. And uh, again, this is important, uh, you know, to get the, the, the proper state of water in, into our bodies. And of course, in, in nature, you can find structured water in, in flowing rivers. Uh, but until it gets, you know, to our household, whether it's a tap water or a plastic, plastic, or like water from, from plastic bottles or even glass bottles, it's, uh, uh, it loses its, like someone calls it memory and structure. Um, yeah. And, uh, and, and then, you know, you have to, you have to. To get the proper hydration, you basically have to like structure it. But you can also structure it without uh, without. There are different ways how to structure water. One of them is magnetic, and there are vortexing devices. But you can structure water with uh, with your hands as well. You don't need any device for that. And this is what Masaru Emoto was uh, was writing about in his books. You know that with the attention and with the hands, when you are saying uh, we're sending like uh, positive, you know, emotions to the to the to the water, it will change its structure and it will actually uh, taste taste different. You know, it, there are so many experiments. When, uh, for example, children, you know, put these two plants uh, and one they were, they were praising and the other one they were like cursing and, and the one just died or didn't grow it as much. So this is basically the same. So 
it's uh, I would say it's really you know like uh, beneficial to to structure the water. Yeah, and your your analogy with like the example of the experiment with plants, and it just makes me think about the idea of like again going back to these energies and how that even relates to the human body the concept of your belief system and how if you consistently talk to yourself and that voice in your head is constantly negative versus being positive, the potential impact that has on preventing you from reaching a certain goal, achieving a certain body composition or some kind of accomplishment that feels out of reach versus the person who's frequently telling themselves they can, they're able and having that positive perspective. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. That's that's all really fascinating. And, you know, just to kind of like connect this idea behind the Soma Vedic itself from EMFs and then layering in structured water, what was the founder's philosophy and like why that was kind of an evolution of the product itself? I don't know if they like came hand in hand or like just, you know, in the history of product development, but how did that all kind of fit together and come to be like as two functions of what this Soma Beta can do? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, the first, the first prototypes of Soma Beta, so, I uh, briefly touched upon upon Ivan's journey because uh, he realized that uh, you know uh, geomagnetic zones and EMFs uh, uh, are with with in some cases the root cause uh, of of our problems. So uh, so this was the the first intention. What the geomagnetic zones and and in in a nutshell, so what geomagnetic zones are. Uh, for example, when uh, tectonic plates uh, where they where they meet, uh, there is a geopathic zone creating geopathic stress. Or flowing river uh, below the Earth's surface, uh, the flow is creating vibration, and this is creating uh, you know like geopathic zone and geopathic stress. So, so the intention was to mitigate the effects of uh, of EMFs and, and geopathic zones. And then later, uh, it was uh, in 2000, 2012, uh, he got that idea with the structured, with the structured water. And, and uh, cause uh, you know, he was, uh, you know, trying to, you know, get uh, as many benefits in, into the devices as, as, as possible. So, so yeah, he had this, uh, you know, this idea about the, the, the structured water and it also took him almost a year to get it right. Because for example, you know, you may say that, okay, there are just precious stones and minerals and some kind of technology. So if you go to a crystal shop and you buy all of those like gemstones, then you would have a somobetic, which is, which is, which is not, not true. So he was also uh, like doing the, research and development and trial and error, uh, how to make the somovetic so it structures water. Because the first prototypes, you had to put specific amount of water next to the somovetic for a specific amount of time. Okay. Uh, but this was, you know, this was not very, very useful. So he had to do more experiments and, and uh, yeah, eventually, he came up with the right combination that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how long you leave the water next to it. Uh, it stays structured and, uh, and it doesn't matter how basically, uh, how much of the, of the water it is. So, so yeah, this, the, the water structuring came, came after, uh, the, the initial EMFs and then geopathic zones. And before we run out of time, just to go into a little more detail of what you mentioned about the gemstones and like the actual technology, so to speak, within the Soma Vedic, what, what are some of like the different um, gemstones and precious stones that are going into it? But as kind of a follow-up question to that too, that I think is really interesting to talk about is like, what does the process look like for you all to kind of product test and like how, how do you go about that and determining like the the next iteration of of a lot of you know the, like the original soma vedic and that first generation versus the ones that are on the market today yeah <clears throat> yeah so depending on the soma vedic uh, there are uh, about uh, six to twelve different different gemstones okay. uh we don't like disclose which one they they are but uh, 
But the, the process behind it uh, is uh, that at the very, very beginning, there was, because Ivan had uh, some kind of life-changing events where he started to have out-of-body experiences and astral travel and became very intuitive and sensitive. Wow. So at the very, very beginning, he was actually, you know, it was a feeling thing when he was experimenting and putting it together. And then he had his uh, like five, uh, let's call them like advisors. They were, they also had the like different extrasensory abilities, very intuitive. So whatever edits and changes he has made, uh, all of them had to agree uh, if it's uh, if it's improving the somatic or or if it's doing what he is intending to do. Okay. So they independently agree and gave him like feedback. Yeah, this is what I see or this is what I feel. Then he was so so. This is was the, the the process at the very very beginning, and uh, and. And after that, uh, he started to, to test it with bioresonance devices. So in some countries in Europe, they, they are certified as, uh, as medical devices, you know, for diagnosing and, and treatment. And, uh, and so, so he was testing the, the effects of some of uh, on, uh, you know, thanks to these uh, bioresonance, uh, bioresonance devices. Uh, so, so he had the, this kind of confirmation. Uh, so, and later uh, we've added, uh, you know, when we approached various uh, labs, because we were getting this feedback from our customers, you know, the, the sleep, the headaches, the energy and, and all of that. So we wanted to see like what is actually going on on the, on, on the biological level. So that's why we approach different different labs and they, uh, yeah, so we have various data on, on, on this as well. That's really cool. And I think, you know, again, like a testament to everything we've been talking about in terms of energies, like knowing that that was a part of the history and the evolution of how the product came to be, it, it makes perfect sense. Yes, yes, it was. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it, it is like how it happened and it, it has its place, you know, in the, in the first phases of somatic for sure. And going back to your very original point of if being at a place in your life where you realize like in what you went through personally and, and how you were able to transform your own health, that you have this purpose to be able to help people. Now, looking back on your involvement in Soma Vedic over the last couple of years, how do you feel you are doing in terms of being on track with that mission? Like how, if you could think about yourself and where you were several years before you started working with this company versus today, you, how, how does that feel for you? Uh, it's, it's definitely a great feeling. And, you know, because uh, uh, I'm reading, you know, the the customer system testimonials almost on an everyday basis. And this is the, you know, the most fulfilling thing, you know, anybody can do how, how something, uh, you know, how their, their lives or their, their sleep or, or, or anything. So, uh, I definitely have a good feeling, uh, about this. And this, this was the reason why I uh, like joined the company. Uh, but and on the, on, uh, on the other hand, you know, you, have this mentality to help even more, to help even more, to to to, to be bigger and have bigger impact, etc. So I try to, you know, I try to balance these these, these things because uh, it's great, uh, you know, it's great to to grow and expand. But uh, if I would be focused only on that, I wouldn't have have the time, you know, to appreciate what what I've already done. And I sometimes I really uh, you know, have to just like stop and uh, uh, like really with my mind, like, no, now just like take like an hour off and just think about, you know, what, what was, what was achieved. So, so you can like uh, actually appreciate it because then it would be, you know, only like not enough, not enough, more, more. So, so yeah, but I think uh, currently I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite balanced uh, with this. 
I love that. And to your mention of reading testimonials, or is there a story or a testimonial in particular that maybe like has, has kind of always stayed with you because of like, where, like going back to that goal, like it just stayed with you for that reason, or maybe because like, it was such a profound change for a person that like, even in just reading it or hearing their story, you were able to like, this really solidified for you that you're truly helping people in their health. Yeah, so there are like, like two two stories. Uh, you know, one uh, is uh, uh, is is our like partner or influencer currently because she had you know whenever she was going, she had this like uh, when strong EMS sources were, were around, she had this like rashes all over like oh, all wow. over her body. She's extremely sensitive and reactive to it. Yeah, and. Uh, and like this is what she was fighting for for like several years and with the summer baby it uh, completely stopped wow and, and she That's said right. like yes and she said like this is the most incredible thing that that happened to me because she could see it you know on, on an everyday basis the huge difference like before and before and after so so you know, this is this is something uh, you know that that uh, is is really you know great to see and and and, and read about uh, how the other people's experiences and uh, and another story is is more on the, on the let's say funny note uh, is that uh, one of one of our former advisors had a parrot. Uh, like a small bird in, in San Francisco, and uh, it it had no feathers. It was just basically naked for for some reason okay. for the last uh, five years. And we sent him to some of it basically uh, as a token of appreciation. Sure. And uh, after after two months, he he wrote me that that you right, you wouldn't believe this, but the within the two months, the the feather grew back. And no we, we, yeah, we didn't do anything. I mean, we didn't change anything. Like nothing changed. The only thing that changed in the last five years when they were living there uh, is the is that the, the sum of it was was in house. So, so the 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 feather grew back. Uh, eventually, the the parrot flew away. Unfortunately, you know, because they were not used to that he's able to fly. So, uh, so they were a bit sad. But uh, this was uh, really an interesting, definitely interesting story uh, to see. You know, the the, the correlation. Uh, you know, between between this and uh, later, he was even sending me the photos of of the leaves and plants that he has at home that that were like twice as big. Uh, as they were before. Wow. That's both are very interesting though. That is really fascinating that that happened and, and cool for you to get to hear about those experiences. Um, want to be respectful of your time, but before I let you go, I want to touch on one other thing that you mentioned kind of on the other side of it and just talking about you finding the balance and, and appreciating the growth and what Soma Vedic has been able to do for people in their lives currently today. But as a CEO, I have to ask about the future of Soma Vedic. What are other things that you hope to accomplish, whether that's in the form of like future product development or whether it's more just expansion and bringing awareness by say being on podcasts like this one and having these conversations? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So, uh, I would like to look the I see future of course because you know some Vedic is only one part of uh, of of our like approach to life. Like there's there's diet, there's nutrition, there's sleep, there's like like the fitness, then there's EMF, so all of that. And some of Vedic is like one crucial part of that, or or lowering the 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 EMF exposure is just 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 one part. So uh, what I'm thinking about, uh, you know, in for the for, for the future to uh, be more holistic and and provide uh, like uh, customers or the audience uh, with more uh, tips and tricks how to improve their lives in general because. You know, even though you see it from everywhere, from different influencers, very similar uh, like things and, and tips and tricks how to do different things. But 
it really takes time uh, to to start doing them. So oh, totally. Yes. So even though you are reading it for the for the fiftieth time, the same thing from a different person, uh, there there is always this. Okay, I'm I'm hearing it from everywhere now. I want to uh, start do this. So so basically uh, educating uh, educating more pe- more people on on the holistic uh, you know lifestyle and and uh, how to bring more more energy and balance into their lives. Well, I love that. That's super aligned with the the fix, like my coaching perspective with the fitness fix that none of this happens in a vacuum, right? And I'm often saying that to my clients when it comes to their food choices, like it's not about what you ate for this one particular meal or even in building their consistency. It's not about what you ate on this one particular day. It's how all of that fits together. And then on top of it, how you're sleeping, what your fitness looks like, how you're managing your stress levels, all these different tools and resources we can use to do that. But furthermore, like I I couldn't agree more with what you just said about the fact that, yeah, there's lots of people out there sharing the same information. And I think there's so much value in that. Like as somebody who operates in this space, as both of us operating in the overall wellness space, that's only a benefit to, to what we're trying to do, right? Like if you bring it back to what's your intention and you bring it back to the concept of like, what is the energy that you're putting into all of this? If it's truly a matter of wanting to help people, I see all of those things as a great thing, not as competition or not as like, you know, repeating the same topic over and over again. It's not a reason not to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, breaking habits, it's uh, very difficult. So uh, we just have to, yeah, just uh, support the people. uh, Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Yuri, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate all the value that you've brought to this conversation, to the Fix audience, and to this episode today. And before I officially let you go, we, of course, will link all of this information down in the show notes. But if anybody's interested in learning more about Soma Vedic, tell us where they can go to check it out. Yeah, so they can go to uh, somavedic.com. And if anybody would like to reach out to me uh, personally, uh, like hello at somavedic.com is my email. Perfect. Well, thank you again. I really, really appreciate it. And I am looking forward to continuing along my own journey with my Soma Vedic and I'm very appreciative to have connected with your brand and have it be a part of my own personal wellness journey and maybe some future listeners will be able to say the same very soon. So for everybody who tuned into this episode today, as always, if you found it helpful, if you found it informative, please share it with a friend. Spreading the word, I think it goes back to everything we just kind of landed on. And that's that's really the mission at the end of the day. And you all can do your part in that process too. This has been another incredible episode of The Fix and we will catch you guys next time. Thanks, Yuri. Thank you, Krista.